Good afternoon, and uh, thank you all for for being here today. And those who are uh, on the uh, looking overseas, can I use the word TV land? You're very welcome. And those who will look at us later on from recording, thank you for your time, your presence. And uh, I'm going to talk to you today a little bit about what we did in this workshop. It's it's driven, as you can understand, under the COU initiative. And we look today at the common information space. And the common information space is a, a term that, that is used uh, very much so to uh, to explain how data can be used and and, and shared among um, first responders, operatives, uh, multi-agencies, all in a different way. And it's cru crucial for how crisis management, disaster management can be done. So if you think about it, if you have a flood, for example, and, uh, and the flood is, it, it knows no boundaries. It can go to, say, from Holland to Germany or wherever, wherever it happens to be. You have different operations working there. You have different people, different agencies working together. So if we can get the knowledge capacity put together in a manner and form um, that they can share knowledge, they can make better informed decisions and therefore they become more operative and more effective. And that's give you just a sample flavor of what the common information system is about. And today we brought together three projects. The um, Secure project, the sector project, and the absolute project. Each of these three projects are looking specifically at some part of the common information system. So if we, excuse me, uh, if you take a look at behind me, uh, apologies for this, um, you will see where the episode is very much so is looking at the, the earlier stages of a tr tr mitigation where we have um, the the um, sorry, EPSIDEX and SECURE looking at the recovery end, and we have SECURE looking at the, at the planning stage. But each of them are looking at different entities of the overall system to, to make it work. So let's just take a look at what these projects are. And let me go stand, I think it's better. Um, so it's, if you look at the sector SECURE core project, it aims to identify data sets, processes, information systems, and business models used by first responders and police authorities in order to provide a dynamic and secure cloud-based common information space, which is based around the pan-European disaster entry of past critical events and disasters. So that we're gathering the information from the past and we're using it in a manner and form that we share the, share the information in a manner and form that's understood at different levels. Now a key thing here is interoperability. Interoperability is not just about data. It goes from semantic to technical to, to physical to ethical, legal, all the way up to the policy levels. And it's, it's, it's trying to use that knowledge. And these projects are the three that we're going to go through now actually used some of the work that they did to kind of show what is needed in, the, in these specific areas. So that's the first project. The second project that we can look at now is the sector project. And sector is a project which I'm pleased to say worked on uh, with Sadin and my colleagues, and it aims to provide um, supporting support for collaborative crisis management processes and help first responders, including fire brigades and so forth, to share information and resources, while respect, and this is the key word, the autonomy of each agency and the legal requirements at the local level. So here you can get a fail and picture that, that when we're doing this, when we're dealing with interoperability, when we're dealing with data sharing, we have to respect the autonomy. We have to also understand the legal requirements. So what's important in one Pacific region, say, say Holland, for example, there's the flood, it may not be the same level as, as I understood as it is in Germany. So we have to understand how the legal system works and develop the platforms that are based all, all around that. If we go to the next slide, the EPSIDIT project, very much so again in the same kind of space, is aimed at providing a common European information space concept for future integration of pan-European crisis and disaster response cap capability. Uh, it involves the development of common taxonomies and ontology models, along with the establishment of interoperability at both physical and statistical level. So again, the same, the same things. Interoperability is key at semantic level, at, in, at technological level, and this whole project is looking at, 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 at making a common information space working. So therefore, the first responders, the fire brigade, uh, all the people involved along the chain can work better and more, more efficient. So we go to. So we took an approach today. We um, we 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 had a wonderful workshop. Another workshop. We decided that what we needed to have is to share the knowledge, get the get the get the understanding. Because when people talk about common information, they don't know what it means. 
that are not clear enough. Today we kind of explained it. We explained it through a number of ways. We explained it through the, pro pro through the process of holding the likes of round tables where we got discussion going two ways of, uh, from an ethical point of view, from a, uh, um, from a technical point of view, and also from, from an energy user perspective. We also looked at key areas like uh, the, the pan-European inventories. We looked at, um, at uh, taxonomies and standardizations. And all along the workshop was designed not to talk but to listen and to get engagement going. And we're very pleased to say we, we, we've achieved that. And now, as of next week, we will now bring together the three projects and hold a meeting and see how we're going to bring collectively these projects forward. And that's very, very important. So after today, or later after this presentation is done, we will, we will be at the sector dissemination table, and we want to continue talking to people and listen to them to get their inputs and, 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 and the advice or our experiences to see how we can bring this whole area forward because there have, have been findings. These are some of the findings that came out today. Different approaches from the three projects demonstrated good complementary functionality. That was a key message that came across. The need for complementing existing legacy systems rather aiming to replace them is critical. So nobody in the fire brigade or in, in the police service actually wants to change the system because it's taking time, effort, money, training, and so forth to get it there. So we want to use the existing systems. So all the work we do in this area has got to support them as opposed to replace them. Prototyping is existing. Now, this is the key, the key question. If we have the prototypes there, if we have existing systems, how do we bring it to the marketplace? So the end users are very clear to make it known to us. We like what you're doing. We can see the advantage of it. But when a crisis happens, a situation happens, you have the technology, but we're the end users. So how do we bridge this gap and how do we go forward? So that's something that we're going to talk about next week at our meeting to try to drive this whole forward. But it's a key point. It was said to us that um, one of the doctors who was at the, at, the, uh, at the event at the workshop made it clear to us that they have a problem on how to collect information and digitize data. Currently, they're using the handmade approach to the writing notes. So they want to get the, get the whole process brought to the as early as possible in the whole chain of, of crisis management. They do not want to wait during the long, so the timing becomes a factor. So this is something that we've recognized. Yes, we, we can see what we can do to, to build on that. And the bullet point highlighted at the end and in dark is clear. We need to get a better return at these R&D investments of allowing existing technologies to be used for new applications. And the message is clear. At the, at the workshop, they were saying, technology is fine, it's great. But if it stays in the cocoon area and it doesn't get to the end users, it has little value except that it was great for demonstration purposes. So somehow, we need to recognize there's a problem there and find a way in which we, we bring it forward. And there may be many, many solutions or options from political levels down to policy levels and so forth, but that needs to be discussed. And that's a key message that came across from today's meeting. That's the general. We go to the next slide, please. From an end user's perspective, um, the common information space allows people to be aware of existing tools, which is not currently the case and provide a mechanism for combining them for new applications. An important point to us. Why? Because this will provide better value for the European taxpayers and results in solutions being brought to the market quicker and for the, be the benefit of the end users. So again, the end users say, Technology is great, but we've got to get it to us. And somehow there's a strategic problem between having the technology that's been demonstrated quite well today and getting it to the end users. Um, and, and we have to recognize that's there. New shared systems should be built with the intention of allowing them to for inter interconnections. So, the, the, so, so they're saying there's no point in having going off and, and creating uh, peripheral systems or systems. They have to be designed where interoperable to the foreground from a semantic point of view, from a technological point of view. They've got to be done. And we should be defining within the European Commission what specifically are the ones that we want you to f want to follow. So any new system coming forward, be it through Horizon 2020 or individually, will recognize this is how we want it done. So we set it from, from from within the, within the commission. And a question was raised that definitely something is missing strategically to get the buy-in from national governments. <laughs> it's not working. So, so the point is, if we're doing it, but to get it at local level, we need to have the government buying into this. So again, the, the issues are coming across to us today. We're saying, right, same problem, great solutions, but we got, if you don't get buy-in, 
We don't have any at all. So the end users want this problem looked at going forward. We're going to look at two other slides at the moment. One is called standardization, the other is taxonomy. So from a standardization point of view, and I know we're going to have a, a separate session on standardization, but from our point of view, when we looked at the common information space, these were the findings. Contribution to standards is a huge challenge for the EC funding projects, given the limitations of times and budgets. Many standards exist that can be envisioned, covering the layers of the infrastructure, inf inf sorry, inter inf stack. So they're out there. So in other words, we're not creating standards in that sense, we're using ones that are, that are out there. We in the projects, EPSIDEC, we in sector, and we in SecureCore have come up with a common, sorry, a CWA kind of approach, and we're focused very much on tech and, and terminology to move the whole process. So we are now defining the terminology when it comes to the common information space so that others will follow. It's a CWA, a CWA has a limited lifespan. It has six years, and if nothing happens, in other words, trying to do tech, technical report or standard stuff, it will die. So it's in our interest to move this whole process forward, and we have terminology as a starting point to go forward. Next slide. Taxonomies. The taxonomy is not necessarily visible to humans in the loop, but it's there, and, and, and lots of algorithms in the background. It's moving in how, to, how the, the meta models and the data models work together, so they're a clear, they're a clear part of it. And uh, demonstrating it at that time can be proved difficult, but we managed successfully to, to show both of them working through the demonstrations in sector and also sec secure core today. The integration of legal, ethical, social, um, uh, in integration seems to be providing significant added value. So if you look at the layer of the uh, interoperability, and we're not just talking about semantics, we're not talking about technology, we're also talking about the, the legal, how governments across each other um, communicate. Or if something goes wrong, what kind of legal, legal, legal standard are you using, how you apply it. So the legal aspect is also becoming a critical part to this whole in area of the common information space. And finally, uh, we would not seek to replace existing languages, but rather to focus on alignment. So in other words, whether it be, it, uh, be, it, be it German, be it French, be it, be it English, the, the whole focus on getting alignment of the language. So when the data is coming across, when the information is coming across, it is clear, it's well understood, and, and it's well defined. And everybody who's involved in the process at a crisis management stage, where it goes right across different, different, um, different geographic areas, can understand, and decisions are made wisely with correct information given to them. So I think that's me uh, in terms of the, the presentation. And uh, yeah, so thank you very much for, for listening. Thank you very much for being here. And uh, those who are looking in TV land, um, yeah, I hope you found it very beneficial. Thank you. Bye.